Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you're looking for some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. For dinner this first night, we had my parents and my siblings over. I mentioned this in my grocery haul, but my husband and I will be heading out of town for business and we'll be out of town on Father's Day. So we wanted to go ahead and celebrate with our family early. So we grilled out hamburgers and hot dogs. Let me show you what I made. First up, my dad requested potato salad. I've shared how I make this before on my channel. I'll have that video linked in the description box below. Um, I'll quickly go over it, but if you'd like to see kind of more in depth, check out that video. So here's what I like to use for it. I use sweet relish. If you prefer dill pickle relish, use that. Some people I know will um, just use pickles and chop them up themselves. Next, normally I use mayonnaise for my potato salad, but my dad prefers Miracle Whip, so I'm going to use that today for him. And then I've got some um, mustard, salt, and pepper. In this bowl here, I've got um, the mayonnaise, or Miracle Whip rather, the mustard, the relish, the salt, the pepper, and then I finally diced up some onions as well as some hard-boiled eggs. I'm going to mix all of that together until it's well combined. And then next, I'm going to add in my potatoes. These are just russet potatoes that I peeled, cut into chunks, boiled them in salted water until they were fork tender, drained them really well. So I'm going to add the potatoes, gently stir those in, and then that's it. I'm going to place a um, lid on this and then put this into the refrigerator until we're ready to eat. Next, I made a three bean salad. So I've shared before on my channel that normally when I make three bean salad for my husband, I just use a can of three bean salad, which is just one can with three different kinds of beans in it. And then I normally add some Italian dressing and a little garlic powder. But this time I wanted to try it from scratch. So here are the ingredients that I used. And I'll put the recipe that I use in the description box below. I believe I combined a couple different recipes. So I've got some white vinegar, some oil, some sugar, salt and pepper for my beans i'm using chickpeas green beans and dark red kidney beans now the recipes called for raw onion um, i didn't have any more on hand my husband doesn't prefer raw onion in most things so i just skip that but you can of course add it now i'm just going to drain the dark red kidney beans and rinse them drain the other beans and then place them into a bowl add in the oil vinegar salt pepper and sugar and then i decided to add in a little garlic powder as well I'm going to stir everything until it's combined and place that into the refrigerator next my dad requested baked beans so this is what i'm using to make those got a couple cans of pork and beans some dale's reduced sodium seasoning i'm just going to add just a little bit of that a little bit of worcestershire sauce some ketchup some barbecue sauce a little bit of mustard brown sugar, molasses, I added a couple drops of liquid smoke, some salt and pepper, and then in these two baggies, in the one on the left, I have some cooked bacon. I just took a few slices of bacon and cooked it up in the oven, I believe. And then in the other baggie, I have a pound of ground beef that I cooked along with some sliced onions, salt, pepper, and a tiny little bit of dales. Now, I don't have a recipe for this. I just eyeballed all of the ingredients, but I combined everything except for the bacon. I combined all of that and then uh, sprinkled the bacon on top, and I baked this at 325 degrees for about an hour. All right, and here's our spread. So we've got the potato salad, baked beans, three bean salad. My mom brought some deviled eggs. And then on the bottom left, I made my ranch chip dip. I'll be sharing how I make this in an upcoming video. It comes out on Thursday, I believe. So keep an eye out for that. And then I grilled up some hamburgers and hot dogs on our grill. I've mentioned before on my channel that some people in my family like barbecue sauce added to their burgers and dogs while they're being grilled. Some don't, so I'll always do an assortment. Some with barbecue sauce, some without, some with cheese, some without. And then we've got our buns, our toppings for our burgers, so some lettuce, tomato, and onion. And then I just set out an assortment of condiments so everybody could kind of use what they've got. We've got some sauerkraut, chow chow, relish, ketchup, mustard, pickle, chipotle mayonnaise, all kinds of good stuff. I cut up a watermelon for us and it was delicious. And then I forgot to take a picture of the whole cake. I apologize, but this was kind of a last minute decision. I decided to make a pineapple upside down cake. I know my dad really loves those and the rest of the family enjoys them as well. I just used the Betty Crocker recipe and it is easy and delicious. So I'll have that link down below. 
Here is a picture on my plate. This was so, so yummy. We had leftovers for days and it was really nice to celebrate Father's Day with my family. And I forgot to mention, I also just cooked up a box of Velveeta shells and cheese and served that as well. That was mostly for my little brother. He doesn't prefer like the potato salad and baked beans and everything. So normally when we do a dinner like this, I'll make macaroni and cheese for him. But we all enjoy macaroni and cheese, except my dad. My dad is not a macaroni and cheese fan. <laughs> um, but anyway, that was our dinner this night. For dinner the next night, we had leftovers. I didn't get a picture of mine, but this is a picture from last week's What's For Dinner video. This is what I had. I have leftover uh, cracked chicken bake. So I'll have that video linked in the description box below. It was really yummy. And then my husband had leftover um, burgers and hot dogs from the night before. I had some steaks in my freezer that I wanted to use up, so I decided to make some steak kebabs. I have the New York strip steaks. Like I said, I just had these in my freezer. I thawed them. I'm going to cut them into chunks and then marinate them in some of this Dale's seasoning. I mentioned this when I got this in my grocery haul. I haven't used this Dale's seasoning in years and years and years, but from what I remembered, it's really pretty salty. Um, so I got the reduced sodium and I just added that. I did not add any additional salt to the meat whatsoever. So I marinated this overnight and then I just took the um, steak chunks, placed them on a couple skewers, and then I'm gonna grill them until they are done to our liking. And for one of my sides, I made some stuffed mushrooms. I'll have the recipe linked down below. Here's what I'm using. I've got some salt, pepper, button mushrooms, garlic that I'm going to mince, some grated Parmesan cheese, softened cream cheese, some onion I'm gonna finely dice, and then sliced bacon. So to make this in this skillet, I've got it over about medium, medium low heat. I've just got my chopped up bacon. I'm going to cook that until it's crispy and then remove the bacon to a separate bowl. Now, if there's quite a bit of grease in there, you'll wanna take some of that bacon fat out, but I'm going to add in the diced onion along with the mushroom um, stems from the caps. I'm going to cook that until the onions and mushrooms are tender. I'm going to add in the minced garlic and then turn my heat down to low. I'm going to add in the cream cheese as well as the Parmesan cheese and stir that. Once the cream cheese has kind of melted together, I'm going to add my bacon back in. Give this a taste and you might want to add a little bit of salt and pepper. Then I'm going to take this mixture, place it into the mushroom caps. Now you can bake this in a regular oven at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes, but because I was grilling the steak kebabs, I just went ahead and cooked them on the grill. I did it over um, indirect heat and I just cooked them for 20 minutes. I had some farm fresh corn on the cob that I got when we went up to Kentucky, so I decided to grill that for my other side dish. In addition to the corn, I'm going to use a little bit of melted butter, some salt, pepper, and then some of this Kinder's Buttery Steakhouse seasoning. So to grill these, I cut the corn cobs in half this time. You don't have to do that. I just decided to do it to make it a little easier to eat. But I'm adding the corn cobs to a piece of aluminum foil. I'm going to brush the corn cobs with some of the melted butter, season it to taste with the salt, pepper, and kinders. I'm going to wrap that in the foil really well and then place this onto the grill. I grilled it for about 12 minutes on one side, flipped it, and grilled it for another 12 minutes. And I cooked that over about medium heat. Here are the finished steak kebabs. And normally when I make steak kebabs like this, I will um, alternate the steak cubes with some pieces of onion and mushrooms. But because I was making these stuffed mushrooms on the side, I just did the steak kebabs this time. And then we've got the finished stuffed mushrooms as well as the corn. And then here are the plates. Not very colorful, I know. But again, remember, keep in mind, not all vegetables are green. <laughs> so I know it's a little brown and yellow, but we've still got our veggies in there. This was delicious so incredibly good those stuffed mushrooms are so yummy that corn on the cob fresh corn on the cob with butter oh so so good and those steak kebabs i mean you can't go wrong with steak For dinner the next night, we just did a yo-yo night. Yo-yo is you're on your own, which basically means everybody finds whatever they want. My husband decided to try this Trader Joe's butter chicken and basmati rice frozen meal. We'd never had this before. We just cooked it according to the package instructions. And he said this was actually pretty tasty. He would eat this again. And then for me, I was not super hungry this night. I wasn't feeling great. Um, and so we had had Mexican, I think like the day before for lunch and we had leftover chips and salsa. I just warmed up the queso dip and that's what I had. I just had chips and salsa and queso and that was our dinner this night. 
For dinner the next night, I tried a new recipe. I saw this on Amanda's channel. Her channel is Faith Food and Family. I'll have it linked down below. This is the Pioneer Woman Cobb Chicken Salad, and it was good. I would make this again. It was definitely different. It was unlike any other chicken salad I've ever had. So here are the ingredients that you'll need. I know it kind of seems like a lot, but it's really, really easy to put together. So for the dressing for the chicken salad, we're gonna use some mayonnaise, buttermilk, sour cream, Worcestershire sauce, salt and pepper, and chives. Some cooked and crumbled bacon. And just a side note, all of this bacon isn't for this recipe. Some of it was for a different recipe. We've got some hard boiled eggs, cherry tomato, some avocado, green onions. And then for the chicken part, the Pioneer Woman's recipe calls for rotisserie chicken. I just took a couple chicken breasts and boiled them in some water with some chicken bouillon and salt until they were cooked all the way through and then shredded them myself. Um, I would imagine you could use like canned chicken, whatever you've got on hand, I'm sure would be fine. And then the recipe calls for blue cheese crumbles. I don't prefer blue cheese at all, but I know my husband really likes it. So what I'll do is, um, you know, take the chicken salad and then at the end, I'll add in some blue cheese for him. All right, this is really easy. Let me show you how to put this together. Now, I believe the Pioneer Woman's recipe says to just mix everything together, um, but I wasn't sure if there would be too much dressing, not enough dressing, so I made the dressing in a separate bowl. So in this bowl, I'm going to combine the mayonnaise, the milk, the sour cream, the Worcestershire sauce, salt, pepper, and chives, and I'm going to whisk that and stir it until it's really well combined, and then I'm gonna set that to the side. So in this larger bowl, I'm going to mix up this salad and I wanted to try this kind of like hack that I just saw on if the creek don't rise, I'll have her channel link down below. She used one of these meat choppers, you know, that you usually chop up hamburger meat um, to chop up her hard boiled eggs, worked like a charm, it was so handy. So I chopped up the hard boiled eggs and then I'm gonna add in the cooked and crumbled bacon, the shredded chicken, my cherry tomatoes, I'm gonna cut those in half. Next, I'm going to add in the chopped green onions and then stir that mixture until it's combined really well. Now, I decided to hold off on adding the avocado until we're ready to eat this. I just was afraid that it would go brown. I'm going to add the dressing, stir it until it's combined really well, and then I'm going to cover this with a lid and place this in the refrigerator until we're ready for dinner. While I was getting everything ready for dinner, I took out some of the chicken salad. I'm going to add in some of the blue cheese crumbles and stir that until it's combined really well. I chopped up the avocado and added the avocado between the chicken salad, the chicken salad with the blue cheese and without. And then that's it. We'll be ready to make our sandwiches. Here are the plates. So the Pioneer Woman suggested serving the chicken salad on sourdough bread, and we had some sourdough left over from the Amish when we went to Kentucky. Uh, so I just placed the chicken salad on the sourdough bread and cut it in half. We have some watermelon, and then we also had some pepper jelly cream cheese dip. I will be sharing this in that same video that the chip dip will be um, shown in this upcoming Thursday. So this was our dinner this night. Really summery. It was light, refreshing refreshing, really yummy. For dinner the next night, I made spaghetti. I've mentioned this before, but my husband and I aren't huge spaghetti fans. Like we have to be in the mood for it. And I saw uh, Sammy over at Manage in the Maze make this recently and it just looked delicious and I've been craving it. So here's what I'm going to be using to make the spaghetti. I've got my spaghetti noodles. Now there's two boxes here because in this Ronzoni package, there's only a little, little bit of spaghetti left. So I'm just gonna use that up and then some of the other. I've got some spaghetti sauce, fresh garlic, some red onion uh, that I need to use up. So I'm gonna chop that up. I've got a little bit of tomato paste here. And then Sammy used this packet of the thick and zesty spaghetti seasoning. Now I've never used this before, but I wanted to give it a try and it was delicious. We will definitely make this again. I've got some lean ground beef. Sometimes when I make spaghetti, I'll either do ground turkey or ground beef. Either is fine. And then I really wanted to use some fresh mushrooms. I thought I had some on hand, but I didn't. But in Sammy's video, she used some canned mushrooms. And I was like, oh yeah, I've got a can of mushrooms in my pantry. So I'm going to use that as well. 
All right, so in my skillet, I have the ground beef, the chopped onion, and fresh garlic. I seasoned this with some salt and pepper and just cooked it on about medium heat until the ground beef was cooked all the way. If you're using a more fatty ground beef, you may need to drain it, but mine was fine. Now, normally I would add in a little bit of uh, tomato paste and stir it into the ground beef, but when I opened that baggie with the tomato paste, it was weird. It was like moldy, so I just tossed that and didn't add it, um, but it was still delicious. So I've added in the spaghetti sauce as well as that seasoning packet. I'm going to season this to taste and then uh, just simmer that while my spaghetti noodles are cooking. And I forgot to mention, but I also put my drained mushrooms into um, the spaghetti sauce as well. All right, so to go along with this, I'm making some of these breadsticks. I'm just gonna cook these in the oven according to the package instructions. And then I decided to garnish this with a little bit of basil. And I know this might be silly for me to share this, but um, in one of my grocery hauls, I'd mentioned that I'd got this basil plant and I was gonna try to keep it alive. And several of you sweet subscribers left me instructions you suggested to move it to a bigger pot put it in the sun and water it so i've done that and look it's still living so far fingers crossed it'll last me throughout the season all right here is the finished spaghetti as well as the breadsticks once the breadsticks were out of the oven i brushed them with some melted butter and then here are the plates so we've got the spaghetti i topped the spaghetti with a little parmesan cheese as well as the fresh basil we have the breadstick and then i made some side salads my husband really loves dipping breadsticks in um, like the olive garden dressing when we go to olive garden and we had one of these little containers of the olive garden italian dressing in our pantry i got these at the dollar tree so i set that out so he could dip his breadsticks this was delicious this this spaghetti with that little seasoning packet i don't know what it was about that seasoning packet but it was really good we both really enjoyed this and dinner was super delicious and best of all we had leftovers for lunch the next day for the last dinner in this week's video, I tried a new recipe for marinated hot dogs. This is from The Plain Chicken. I'll have it linked down below. I've had this pinned on Pinterest for a while now, but it was one of those things where it was like, it kind of sounded good, but I wasn't really sure. Um, but one of you subscribers, I believe her name is Cheryl, commented a couple weeks ago and suggested that I give this recipe a try. And so I was like, okay, I need to try this. So we did and we enjoyed it. Let me show you how to make these. You'll of course need hot dogs, just use whatever kind or brand you and your family prefer. We've got some salt and pepper, brown sugar, chili sauce, yellow mustard, Worcestershire sauce, garlic powder, and onion powder. Now I'm mixing this up in a measuring cup. You can of course do it in a bowl. I'm going to add the chili sauce and this worked out perfectly. I needed to use up this little bottle of chili sauce and the amount that the recipe called for was exactly what I had, so that worked out perfectly. I'm going to add in the garlic powder, onion powder, the Worcestershire sauce, the brown sugar, yellow mustard, salt and pepper, and then I'm gonna stir that until it's combined really well. Once I've got that mixed up, I'm going to set that to the side and get started on the hot dogs. So what we're gonna do is take our hot dogs and you wanna take a little knife, a paring knife works perfectly, and you wanna make little slits into the hot dogs and you wanna do it at an angle so it makes uh, like little half circles, just like this. So we're going to do it on one side of the hot dog, flip it over, do it on the opposite side. We're going to add our hot dogs to a Ziploc bag Add in that marinade, and then this is going to go into the refrigerator, I would say at least for a couple hours um, up to overnight, and then we're going to grill these. Now, for my side dishes for this, I had big plans of doing like a tomato cucumber salad and bacon fried corn, but we were getting ready to head out of town, and I didn't want to have leftovers, and honestly, I just didn't feel like it this night, so I just cooked up some box macaroni and cheese, just the good old craft, and I cook it according to the package instructions. Now for the other side, I had just a little bit of fresh broccoli in my fridge and I wanted to use it up. So what I did is took the broccoli, I cut off most of the stems, added it to this bowl, added a couple tablespoons of water. I covered this with some plastic wrap and placed this into the microwave for about four minutes. I then removed it from the microwave and carefully removed that plastic wrap, added a, just a tiny little pat of butter, some salt, pepper, and some of the Kinder's Buttery Steakhouse seasoning. And then here we have our buns, some ketchup, mustard, and relish, and the grilled hot dogs. Here is the macaroni and cheese. Once it was done, I just add in a slice of American cheese. Just makes it extra creamy and adds a little more cheesy flavor. 
Here are the plates. So we've got the hot dogs, the macaroni and cheese, and the broccoli. I wasn't super hungry this night, and we didn't have very much broccoli anyway, um, so I didn't give myself a lot. But what I did have, it was yummy. That little Kinder's buttery seasoning is delicious. And those hot dogs, we really enjoyed them. They really reminded me of like the grilled barbecue hot dogs that I normally make with the chili sauce and the mustard and the brown sugar. You're basically making your own barbecue sauce. So this was delicious. So yummy. All right, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.